So now let's get into extended hydraulics and machine. You majority, at least the majority of what you do is in the mining world. Sitting down with you and listening to you talk has let me know just how little I know about that part <laughs> of the industry, and it is fascinating to me. So could you please share with the audience, since 2013 when you bought this company, where the focus has been in your manufacturing and what you guys are able to do, which sets yourself apart from other pieces of this manufacturing industry? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I don't know if most people know, but Saskatchewan is very rich in the resources we do have. We have potash, uranium, we have oil and gas, we have rare earth minerals, we have helium. Like, it's almost all right here in Saskatchewan, and which is, surprises most people, right? Um, potash has been one of our bigger industries for the past 50, 60 years. Uh, the first potash mine was, I believe, built in Esterhazy area around 1950-ish. Um, and uh, since then, many other the potash mines have popped up. A lot of them have been operating there for a very long time. Uh, most people don't know how the potash is mined here in Saskatchewan. It's about the seam of potash is about a mile underground. Um, there is some solution mines that use injected steam to get the potash out of the ground, but for the most part, it's all done with mining equipment, rotary mining equipment. We call them four rotor miners, and they all are big, heavy pieces of equipment that operate a mile underground in the potash seam, and they mine the potash and bring it out by a conveyor belt and then process it into the fertilizer that the world needs to feed its population. Um, at, as the population of the world continues to grow, there's less and less favorable land that we're trying to grow food on. So we're going to need more and more potash to be able to do that. So the demand for potash has been growing, which has brought the focus to Saskatchewan for its potash, among other things. Um, what most people don't know is potash is a very harsh environment to work in. It's salty, it's damp, it's wet, so it's heavy corrosion, heavy dust, heavy vibration. Uh, it's a very uh, intensive mining process. And that's where we got our start, building hydraulic cylinders for all the mining equipment that works underground in Saskatchewan. I wouldn't be surprised if our company supplies close to 80% of the underground mines in Saskatchewan with their hydraulic cylinders. Uh, we're very proud of that. Over the years, we've done continuous improvement on that. Um, as we uh, see cylinders come in for repair and overhaul, we focused on what was wrong with them when they came in, what could we do to improve that? What could we do to make it better? What can we do to make it last longer? Uh, hydraulic cylinder typically, um, before we started tweaking them, would last three to six months underground under regular use, right? Um, we've been able to increase that to the point where they're actually overhauling the miner anyways, which is about a year. So huge improvement on the quality and the lifespan of that cylinder. Um, and it's all been through focus of process, not only what we're building and how, and, and how it's built, but the time it takes to build it, right? Focusing on different things within the hydraulic cylinder. Most people look at a hydraulic cylinder and say, hey, that's a pretty simple thing. Anybody can build one of those. But when you get into the, the, the depth of it, there's a lot more to it than, than most people see. So as we did this, uh, we started to wanting to document what we were doing and how we were doing it and keeping track of how much improvements we were making. Uh, so we actually started adding RFID tags to all our hydraulic cylinders. We hired our own guy to do our own internal software development. Uh, his name is Mitchell. Um, he developed software to run our RFID tags. So we've been able to collect a large data of information about these cylinders that we've been rebuilding and we can actually prove how much longer they're lasting and why they're lasting longer and how long they're in use and what machine they came off of when they come back to our shop. And it, it's been what we thought was going to be just a value add to our hydraulic cylinders has turned into so much more and so many more requests than we actually started out with with our FID tags. Um, and then as uh, mining technology has changed in Saskatchewan, the focus has been on automation. So they want to start operating miners from a control room above ground instead of having as many people underground operating these miners, right? It's all safety. It's about, you know, making sure people go home safe at the end of the day. And it's harsh environments working underground. It's hard on people and, and equipment, right? Um, so they've switched to automation. With automation, uh, hydraulic cylinders become very important again because you can't control an automated miner with hydraulic fluid. 
you have to have an electronic position sensor inside those hydraulic cylinders. So we started focusing on adding position sensing technology to our hydraulic cylinders. A lot of the position sensors that are on the market today um, didn't stand up very well in the potash environment. And we found that out very quickly. And uh, what we seen was the mines were looking back at us and because the internal position sensors inside the hydraulic cylinder, the position sensor failed, our cylinder failed. So we started looking to more advanced technology and how can we can improve these position sensors. And uh, we've actually been able to pinpoint some very durable position sensors and we started to develop some of our own internal position sensors that we're building in-house and, and we're hoping soon we'll be having those come to market too. But I would almost consider us a world leader in position sensing technology and cylinders and uh, we're right here in Saskatchewan, Canada. I will make you a world leader in that as well and I would never tell you that a hydraulic cylinder is easy to make. <laughs> you will not hear that out of my mouth. Uh, but one thing I'd like to do real quick for the audience in case there's people out there who are much like myself, uh, before coming in and having this conversation with you, I didn't really understand the significance and importance or really even what pot ash was. So if you could just take a couple of moments to explain its significance. I'm sure there's an audience out there right now rolling their eyes going, come on, Tony, we know what this is already. <laughs> but there's a population out there that's going, well, we heard you say pot ash. We heard you say that it's uh, one of the environments that's tough to mine. Uh, we heard you describe all the things you're making for it, but it actually has a really incredible significance. And you did uh, gloss over it quickly with all the food that we need to make as the growing population. But what is potash? So potash is a fertilizer that's found naturally in the soil in, in uh, Saskatchewan. So my limited understanding of how the world evolved, uh, Saskatchewan was originally a great big lake. Or, or part of an ocean or something to that effect. I could be wrong on that. I'm sure a geologist will be out there laughing at me right now. But as uh, we had the ice age and the, the glaciers retracted and the continents moved around, what was the bottom of an ocean bed or a lake bed is now the Great Plains of Saskatchewan, Alberta, Manitoba, right? Where we grow all our wheat, uh, oil, wheat, uh, mustard, uh, there's several crops that we grow here in Saskatchewan, and it grows really well in our, our soil because our soils are really rich in the fertilizer that it needs, right? Well, what we've discovered is that way down there's a sediment about a mile underground of potash, and that potash is what makes the soil so rich and able to grow food so well. So that became a commodity item for Saskatchewan. So we started mining the potash. The potash uh, there's a few companies out there, Mosaic, Nutrien, they turn the raw potash by adding other components to it and make a fertilizer out of it that you can add to any crop anywhere in the world and it makes the ground more susceptible to growing food, right? Makes it, it you'll have better yields out of your crop, you'll have more, uh, more places that you can grow crop where the soil isn't necessarily growing anything and like you said, as the world continues to grow, we're going to need to find different places to grow food so that we can have a larger amount of the wheats that we need to make our breads, the, the mustard seeds that we need to make mustard, the canola oil, canola crops that we need to make canola oil. Um, and canola oil is becoming a replacement for fuel too, right? So there's even a bigger demand for canola because of the simple fact that you can convert that into a, a, a reusable fuel instead of continuing to mine the oil that we have underground. It's all insightful and intriguing to me. Now, I know that you have recently invested in additional Mazak machines. You have recently invested in automation cells for welding through great partners like Aceta. There is growth and expansion that I know we're going to have Jordan talk about in just a minute. Uh, because you you have goals, you have aspirations of what you would like to do. Uh, but currently, within your facility, you are continually, continually investing in yourselves, investing in people, and investing in the community. Where does this all come from? Well, we recognize that um, the companies that we're supplying hydraulic cylinders to aren't just competing in this province of Saskatchewan. So they can't continue to pay more for a product, even if it is better. They've gotta be able to compete on a global scale. 
uh, a company like Nutrien, Mosaic, uh, uh, Cernobis, all these companies that mine uh, chemical, mining uranium, they're selling it on a world market. So they have to be competitive on a world market. So if we can't be competitive with what the world is supplying for hydraulic cylinders, not only in quality but in pricing, we're going to lose out. We, we, we will get some work because, yes, they're going to support the local supply chain. They have to because you're in their backyard. They need that access, but they're not going to buy everything from you unless you can be competitive. We want to be that competitive advantage so that they can buy everything from us and still feel like they compete, can compete on a global scale. So it's very important for us to continually invest in technology so that we can continue to make our products cheaper, I guess cheaper isn't the right word, more cost effective for our customers, you know, and we want that them to come back to us every time they need something, not just when they're in a bind and they need it and they're willing to pay more for it. We want them to think of us as the first person that will supply them with everything they need to do the mining here in Saskatchewan. And as we continue to grow, we want to export exporting outside of our province. Uh, we have, During COVID, we actually patented a new product for oil and gas. We're quite excited about that. I think you'll hear more of that from Jordan. Uh, but we're trying to get that out into the oil and gas industry. And everybody who looks at it so far looks at it and says, oh my God, that's going to be a game changer. And it was something we invented and developed and designed and tested in-house all during COVID when things were a little bit slow because we didn't want to lay off any staff, right? So once you lay off staff, it's hard to get them back, right? So that's why we feel it's so important to invest in the technology going forward. Uh, you can't be competitive on a global scale if you're not doing exactly the same thing everybody else is. And um, I know we talked about it earlier, everybody's scared of losing their jobs to robots, but that, that is not the case, right? We've got to become more technologically advanced and more efficient at everything we do so that we can build top quality products for the price that the world expects to pay for it. Very well said, Robert. I look forward to... Uh talking with Jordan now and bringing him on camera and sharing with the audience what the future of Extended looks like. Uh, but before you go, let me just say best wishes to you and your wife. Congratulations on this amazing company and being a leader. And on behalf of MTD, we wish you all the best 